thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian, and in this video, I'm revisiting a product that I had reviewed, I don't know, maybe like six or seven months ago, something like that. It was the, these boxes for um, A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game, and they were made by, well, they were being sold by the website Tabletop Terrain, and essentially they're just boxes that were organizing the cards, and I reviewed them quite highly, but I wasn't without uh, some kind of criticism for uh, some of the features that I might not have appreciated so much with the line. So the uh, person who's responsible for the design had reached out to me and had recognized my concerns or my cri my critiques, I guess is what you could say, not so much concern, but um, they were really happy to try and collaborate with me a little bit to try and come up with designs that were a little bit more I don't know, like not functional as though these aren't functional, but uh, designs that had addressed some of the things that I had brought up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the comparison between what they look like when I did the video and what they look like now. So this is the previous box that I had reviewed in the original video, and you can see that I'm it's still like intact and you know perfectly fine. It's not busted up or anything, but we still have like again the top thing. Um, so the, I, I do take my Starks out to demo, uh, once in a while, so I do store my dice in here, but this is everything up until Hero Box 3 for Starks that's been released. You see I got some extra room back here for my, uh, for my mission cards, you know, everybody's got one now. But as soon as more Hero Boxes start coming out, uh, I'm gonna run out of space for these dice here. So one of the things that, um, I had talked about in my video was really... It, a lot of it had to do with the insecure connection with the box. I mean, it stays put uh, as long as it's undisturbed, but if you're taking these things out and about, the box has a... Um, it doesn't have any locking mechanism. So if we take a look at the new design here, already you can see it's quite a bit larger. If we compare with the, the top from the other one, you can kind of see there's a, about an extra inch and a half on this side, and then about another inch on the top here in terms of size. When it comes to the uh, height, the two boxes are, they're still the same height. Hopefully you can see here, I'm trying to, it, it always makes me nervous dangling a $1,500 camera in the middle of the air. So um, bear with me on some of these camera angles. But, uh, so the boxes, you know, it's still got the cool uh, symbol in the front, the house saying on top, but here's the other cool thing, maybe some of you have already noticed, I'm shaking the crap out of this thing and it's staying together. You can already kind of see what's going on here, but the box is now magnetized. So there's these little bar magnets that are machined, or uh, not machined, but at least uh, incorporated into the side of the uh, box top. And then there's also this uh, blocking mechanism here, and that exists for dice. So part of the reason why it's gotten bigger over here is so that it can hold uh, so that it can hold your faction specific dice. So I just uh, recently opened up my my Stark starter box, the re the resculpted one that's been sitting around for a while. So now I can actually store all of my Stark dice inside this box now. So I don't need to go looking for them when I'm getting ready to have a game. And when it comes to storage, there's a little bit more uh, functionality with the storage now too. Um, one of the big ones being that, you know, I've got my mission cards all, all here, and then the mission deck as well, or objective cards mission deck. And I'm only, there's only enough space in this particular slot for one copy of the mission deck. I know there are some, there, there's one scenario so far that requires you have each player have one of these decks. So this is something that can just kind of still hang out in here if you really wanted to. Um, otherwise, uh, if your opponents are getting into these boxes, they should have theirs with them too. But otherwise, there's uh, enough space for everything. I think you can put your your base tactics cards up in front here, and then there's tons of room in back. Uh, the number of slots in this box compared to the old box is the same, I believe, but there's just a few more extra slots back here. Like, this is pretty much what I put all of my... Um, all my attachments in and then NCUs I'll throw up here and then this is just like flex storage I guess so um, the box itself is uh, great for holding 
pretty much everything that you need for your faction in terms of uh, cards, dice, etc. And then you know you just store your uh, your activation banners if you use those with the um, with your models. So uh, I'm really digging the new design on this box. I know that uh, one of the things that uh, people had mentioned in the video that I had presented before, or the earlier video, right, was that the box already, this original box here, was too big. So now we seem to be having a, a little bit of dissonance with the new design and that it's an improvement with those people because they're like, okay, now the box is bigger and I've got to lug this thing around with me. So for those of you who do have a problem with the larger box size, uh, the Tabletop Terrain folks have designed a smaller one. So here I've got my Greyjoy box, and uh, comparing to the original box here, it's uh, roughly just a little bit, like maybe a half inch longer, and it's a little bit thinner, so maybe uh, about a half inch uh, more narrow this way. But when we compare uh, the boxes, sorry, my models are just like flying all over here. Um, you're actually at my my painting table right now, which is kind of a mess. But any at any rate, uh, when we compare to the the newly designed box, there's a massive difference between the size here. We're looking at an inch and a half that way, and then um, lengthwise, I would say there's probably another inch and a half difference here. So this box is fairly compact compared to the redesigned one and a little bit more compact compared to the old one. So uh, this, or I'm sorry, I also am forgetting all the names here. So like this box is labeled as the Tournament Squire and that's pretty thematic because it carries a two list pairing. So if you're uh, kicking around and you got your Greyjoys with you and you just want to bring a two list pairing to an event or to a game night, You've got plenty of room over here for your objective cards, so you're set there. You've got enough room to hold a pretty diverse amount of, uh, of unit cards. And then there's two slots here for, uh, for commanders, right? So you've got, uh, you can have your two different commander-specific cards here. You can throw your tactics deck back here, and then units, attachments, NCUs, whatever. There's tons of flex space in here, but also, again, it brings the dice well too, so you can carry your faction specific dice inside the dice well, as, or in, inside the box as well. So it's like, it, it just really is nice for being able to cart something a little bit more compact around at the game tables if you're at a tournament. So uh, with the, the Greyjoy box hanging out here, one of my other critiques, you know, I, I won't call them complaints, were that the, uh, the Free Folk box was roughly the same color and had pretty much the same saying on top of it. So taking a look at the redesigned version of this now, we get to see that the Free Folk now have this super lime green color. So now you will not mix up your Greyjoy box and your Free Folk box because they are quite a bit different in terms of uh, what the box looks like itself. And you can see I've already started kind of filling this guy up. I, I cannot stress how cool it is to just have the dice well over here. Um, I am very much a stuff nerd, and uh, when it comes to factions and playing the game, uh, I will want to have my faction-specific dice with me. Like, I'm not going to sit here and it, it'll it'll hurt me in a, in a bad way if I sit, if I play with my Free Folk deck and start throwing Targaryen dice around. That's just my personal hang-up. But I am very much into the theme of the things that you get with this game. So having these boxes set up so you can just store everything in your faction in one spot and not have to worry about misplacing it or going to search for something else uh, is is something that I take a lot of that I value highly. So um, I'm pretty stoked with the way these boxes have turned out. Another uh, improvement, I guess you could say, with the uh, with the redesigned boxes um, would be at least for me. I think the Baratheon box has gotten a little bit of a glow up. Um, you can see that the old box here, and hopefully it picks up on the camera well, but the old box is a little bit more of a washed out yellow. Um, it's not quite uh, quite vibrant, it's more kind of like creamy, like dirty white. But the new style Baratheon box is very, very yellow, and it still has the, the different symbols on the, on the front and sides. But this one too, just to kind of give you an example, uh, this is everything that's 
re been released for Baratheons currently. So you can see there's plenty of room for another hero box for each one of the Stannis and uh, and Renly sides. Plenty of room for storage for cards. I'm even storing my overflow sleeves in here. Um, and some neutral stuff might have gotten mixed in from the last time I played a game. But, again, all my faction-specific dice get to hang out in the well. I just, like, am really stoked that... Uh, that these turned out that the way that he, the way they did, um, because I can just since I'm a person who owns every faction in the game, I can easily switch and find everything that I need. I don't need to go farting around in some other box to find the things that uh, that I'm looking for. So uh, ha just like just having the ability to uh, uh, I'm sorry, I must have like put this in something so it's got some ickies on it, but um, just to be able to grab my box and know that I've got every commander available to me and all my dice ready and raring to go, especially with having these cool, uh, having the objective cards have their own slot. Um, so many times I know people will come out to a game night and they'll be like, oh, I forgot my objective cards at home or they might have misplaced them somewhere, but now you can just have them hanging out here. It's just uh, very convenient for me. Now, I will say that the line is not without at least one flaw other than... Uh, like, I don't have any real problems with anything functionally, but my, my one side complaint here is probably the, like, this is the, the, the um, Lannister box. There's nothing, there's nothing outside of the norm with this. I, I feel like the box is just fine itself. And then this is the Targaryen box. So, uh, visually, the, visually bleh, there is a difference in the shade. The, um, if you're familiar with, like, Games Workshop paints or Pro Acryl. This is more of like that Mephiston red color, or the uh, Pro Acryl's like um, bold pyreal red. I don't know. That's a, a fun word to say, but it's very very red red. And this is a, just a shade darker of a deeper red on the Targaryen box. But I really did appreciate this uh, hue, this more maroon color, and that's just my own like preference, I guess, is I really did enjoy the fact that the, the box matched more with the, the models in that maroon color. So I, I imagine it's just a, possibly like a um, access to the materials or something that made the, that kind of triggered the change in color. But it's a, it's a minor complaint that isn't really that big of a, a deal, like the Targaryen box itself, when you kind of just have it on its own, I guess, is still... Um, it's still identifiably Targaryens, and you don't really confuse it with the Lannister box at all. And here you can see I've already started filling it up. This one, again, I, I do, I think there's at least one or two hero boxes worth of expansion left in this one. After that, it's going to be a little rough, um, but I am, again, still really, and I think one of the other things that I didn't mention that I should have was that when I was doing the review on the other boxes, uh, the previous ones, the first version of them, there was a moderate complaint that I had that Davos didn't really have a spot to exist in because he was a Baratheon that brought um, multiple uh, multiple cards to exchange, kind of like Targaryen Commander. But now he has his own spot where he can hold all of his cards in uh, in one specific area for for him. So he's because the Baratheons, since they have so many commanders split between the two sides they've got very little room for wiggle in their uh in their compartments but davos back here gets his own little spot so he can exchange uh i think it's ours is the fury right is what he exchanges oh no final strike is what he exchanges so um i you can tell i haven't played a lot of davos but um so that problem's been alleviated and uh overall i'm just uh very happy with uh the way the changes came out now i believe um, this box is labeled as the General's Cash. Then we have the uh, Tournament Squire. And then the old version, the, or the original version of the box with no magnets, um, is, li is listed as the Commander's Chest, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I will leave a link in the description below to Tabletop Terrain's website, and specifically to the place where you can get these boxes. I just am over the moon with uh, the functionality and storage that they have right now. So I hope you enjoyed watching the review for this product. Uh, again, I'm, I'm really happy that the person who is kind of the progenitor behind this uh, product 
had decided to kind of reach out to me and, and work through some of the um, critiques that I had and try to update the product to make it a little bit more accessible or functional for folks. And that's really kind of the theme of this product in general is accessibility. Uh, when I'm getting ready to go out for a game night, the less junk I have to do to get ready to go play that game, the better. I know in other games, I have literally decided to play a list solely based on the fact that it was packed up still and that I didn't have to go through and go to my storage area and reconfigure the way that I'm carrying these models. But with the Song of Ice and Fire, uh, accessibility is something that I really enjoy about the game and I think a lot of other people do as well. You know, you magnetize all your units to their trays and then if you're like me at all, you have some kind of magnetic flat container that you carry around with you. For me, it's a table war case. Um, but then uh, it's easy to get your models pulled out of their boxes, put into whatever kind of tr transport you're going to be using. And then from there, it's like, how do you store your cards? Do you have your neutrals mixed up into other places? Um, that's another thing that I didn't mention in, uh, in the video. Let me just go grab that real quick. So the neutral box from the other video I had stated had the uh, saying from House Bolton on there. And I believe it had the flayed men on the box. One side might have been the flayed man, and then the other side might have been that car the coin purse with the knife through it. But now we've got some more options for the uh, the saying on the top. This one says "My sword for coin," and then has that neutral symbol that we all know and love. So um, to kind of get back to my point, now with getting ready to go out for a game night, I can just grab that whole box and take it with me. I know I have my dice in there. I know I have objective cards. And then I know that I have my uh, my um, my tactics cards and everything like that ready and rare to go. And you know I do use the cool mini or not activation banners, and those stick with my model. So I only really have to go to two places in order to get my stuff together for the night. And if I wanted to kind of exchange commanders and proxy anything out, I know I've got every single thing with me, and I don't need to go rooting around in whatever storage system I have to find those cards. So I appreciate the ease of access that's provided by using boxes like these. So um, my probably closing, I guess it's not a closing statement, it's more of my last point to hit before I close up the video, is that um, if you've been paying attention to my background at all, I do have an FDM printer behind me. And one of the critiques from the viewers in the first video that I had posted was that they could just find that file on Thingiverse and paint it, or print it out on their own and not have to worry about paying the price for those boxes. So I know for myself, um, I much more prefer using a resin printer than I do an FDM. I feel like they're so finicky and their prints are long. And when you, you either, if your print is short, you're sacrificing a lot of detail or structural integrity. So it, a lot of times the, to get something to, to work the way you want it to or to function in the long, fu function for a longer time, it, the print just takes longer and it doesn't take a whole lot for these things to fail a print and once one little slip happens the whole thing's shot. So um, I actually have to, whenever I want anything printed in FDM, things like large terrain pieces or anything like that, I actually have to ask my wife to do it because she messes with the FDM printer a lot more than I do and uh, you know I, I just I feel like for me I'm at a point in my life where I value my time more than my money and when I want a product to do what I do to function and uh, and you know just not have to screw around with it, um, that's when I'll start looking to other people who are experts to kind of take care of that for me. So uh, the other thing that I've noticed about the box that's floating around online is that it very much does not have the same kind of design in mind that these ones do. They all have very specific storage areas for, for very specific things in the game, like your unit cards, objective cards, commanders, dice, all of that stuff, kind of has its own predetermined spot. Now I've seen the box from another local player uh, that, that's floating around out, out there to print yourself, and uh, he had very much uh, kind of echoed my statements that the boxes that I get from Tabletop Terrain are much more uh, functional. They're uh, they're a lot more, it's a lot easier to find what you're looking for in them, and they're just printed well. Um, you know, the person who's been, who's printing these off for tabletop terrain uh, seems to have their stuff together to where there's very, there's not any failures or any kind of weird uh, 
anomalies within the print at all. Like I'm getting a really good pro a really good quality product for the money that I'm investing, and it's just going to last for the entire time that I'm going to be playing this game or however long it's staying in my closet, which I can't imagine they'll ever leave because A Song of Ice and Fire really is my favorite war game to be playing right now. So um, I just kind of wanted to address that a little bit because I know that as 3D printing technology keeps getting better and better and better, the things that make uh, folks who create 3D printed products valuable are the quality of the print and the quality of the design. And I think the folks at Tabletop Terrain have both of those check boxes marked. And uh, I, I think that if you're looking for something like this and not having to, not either you don't own a 3D printer for FEM or you don't want to fart around with trying to uh, create one yourself, I think that um, checking out Tabletop Terrain is definitely in your best interest. So again, I'm going to have a link in the description to get to their website, but I want to thank you all for watching this one. I know that product reviews are not something that I typically engage in, but for these boxes, they are really, I just think they're really neat, and they, they've helped organize my system quite a bit, because as I've, you know, I, I moved into my house here, it's been about a year now, and I still don't have everything organized, except for my gaming stuff, and a lot of that is mostly due to these boxes, because before it was just kind of like chaotic, and as new things were coming out, my storage solutions got to be less and less valuable. So I'm very happy that these things are kind of, you know, existing out there in the universe. So uh, let me know what you think of these things in the comment section below. I know that the person who designed these boxes um, is very uh, willing and or is very active and willing to respond to questions or comments within my video uh, description or within my video comments because they've done so before. Um, so don't don't hold back on anything. I guess is probably maybe maybe that's a little too presumptuous. But um, yeah, just uh, know that you can if you have questions, they can get answered, and and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. So uh, thanks for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.